Hello and welcome to Story Board. This is Shibani Gharat. In the last few years, the advertising industry has seen many changes and challenges as well. My biggest challenge is how to stay ahead of the change, says Tamara in Gram Global CEO JWT. As we speak to her and Tarun Rai, CEO JWT South Asia, about talent acquisition and navigating through the fragmentation in the communication industry. Let's hear the full conversation. Tamara, thank you for talking to us. Now in the last five years, we've seen some extraordinary changes in the advertising business, whether it's revenue models, which is the demands of the client, or your product mix itself. What are your biggest challenges? I think uh, my biggest challenge is, as of many CEOs in many companies, not just in the advertising business, is how to stay ahead of change. Right. How to have the right capability, how to have the right talent, and how to be prepared to move forward rather than hang on to your legacy business. Right. Uh, one of the things you're focusing on is trying to get your product mix kind of changed in keeping with trends and doing a lot more digital than traditional advertising. So can you, you know, share a little bit about your focus there and why you're doing so? Our focus really is to have over 50% of our business in digital. Right. And what are we looking at? We're looking at mobile, we're looking at e-commerce, we're looking at content, which is incredibly important because of the explosion and how to do it in an agile and fast way. In the end, it's having the right talent looking at the business in the right way. Right. You know, this is something I speak to media agency heads and uh, creative agency heads and digital agency heads. All of you are now treading on each other's toes. Mm -hmm. You know, what was the domain of one part of the business is now, you know, somebody else's as well and somebody else's as well. So how do you navigate that area? I think what is um, joyous for us in the advertising business is as fragmentation has increased and the channels have increased, we have a huge opportunity to be the brand navigator. Right. Many of our clients want a singular thread right. of how a brand presents itself. Right. So uh, interestingly, it's coming back to the advertising agencies to care for the brands and to be take the responsibility. guardian for the brands. Right. Yes. So you're dealing with similar challenges. One is traditional versus non-traditional. One is this brand custodianship that Tamara is talking about. You know, yep. it's yep. coming back to you. And India, we've seen fragmentation even with your clients mm -hmm. at a level which is unheard of, and now it's sort of coming back together. Yeah. So touch on both, please. Yeah. I mean, a, I see it as uh, first as an opportunity, uh, and I uh, say to everyone since I've come back from from media a year and a half ago. I said, look at it as opportunity. Uh, we have got uh, so much more work to do. The more the number of platforms, uh, the more the work for anybody who is in the communication space. And secondly, as Tamara has said, what's also happening is that now the, uh, the uh, players are too many. And I keep saying that at the end of the day, there is one brand message to be delivered to one consumer. And in between, now there are 12 or 13 or 14 different ways to reach that consumer with that single brand message. And therefore, you have the risk of uh, the message getting a bit uh, fragmented, uh, not consistent. And as uh, Tamara says, brand custodian, I say a bit more specifically, uh, creative stewardship. And I think a lot of clients are now looking for uh, somebody to do the job of uh, being the, the creative steward of the idea. And I think the agencies are the only ones uh, well placed to deliver that. So, Which agency? Uh, the, agency media agency, uh, the, creative, agency. the creative okay. agency. Because as <laughs> you said, we know the brand best. So <laughs> while there are many, many volunteers to do the job. Claimants. Uh, yeah, many claimants to do the yeah. job. Tamara, you know, uh, just a week ago I was interviewing uh, Menardo Denardis, who is the yes. CEO of uh, yes. Omnicom Media Group. And he told me that they've changed their skill set from having five data scientists in New York to 150 in a matter of five years. Yeah. I mean, forced, of course, by client demands. So are you seeing that uh, as a big challenge to you, changing the mix of your, of your talent? Uh, changing the mix of talent when you're running the business right. is actually very tough. Right. Uh, it is also true that data is becoming a very important part of all our business. Right. Because the magic of today is we genuinely can know what consumers want, where they are, and when we can get hold of them. So right. I think really understanding that data. Right. The trick, however, is to translate that data into something meaningful Actionable, and not just have it as an explosion right. of information. Right. So it's how do we have it in the input to get real insights, and then how can we use it in the output to meet people where they want to be met. Yeah, Tamara, uh, staying with you, the other thing about JWT is you're spending a lot of money on insights, on, on research. Last week I 
interviewed uh, Shireen and Bindu over here yes, in the same room. Absolutely. Yeah, and you're looking at women differently and, um, as a far more important uh, yes. you know, target group to focus on. So share a little bit about why you're doing that and what is going to, how it's going to benefit JWT. I think this is not news to 50% of the population. Correct. <laughs> you women. <laughs> right. <laughs> but we, we are clearly beyond just being mothers. Mm. And we have done a huge study across the world looking at attitudes and looking at our contribution. And the important thing about this is for our clients, the innovation against women and meeting their uh, communication needs will, I think, transform businesses. So what will this do for our clients? It will give them a chance to grow their business and better meet the needs of their 50% of their target group. And for us, I think it will uh, enable a lot of new business to right. come to us. Right. The mother, uh, one of the biggest challenges of the last few years has been, you know, the rise of procurement or rather the yes. birth of procurement. Yes. And as you change your product mix and go more digital and less digital, they start comparing apples with oranges and start saying, Absolutely. you know, but the digital agency is charging less and you're charging more. So how do you navigate that area? I mean, that's a lesson for lots of people and hopefully marketers will watch the show and get a sense from you. I think one has to um, embrace the fact that procurement is here. I, was, I thought you were going to say embrace procurement. I was like, oh, wow. <laughs> And um, I think the way to do that is really to demonstrate the benefit of what we do and also to bring them into the inside rather than to have a combative relationship. So enable them to understand what are apples and pears because you're right, people compare the wrong things and they want rate cards and hour cards for different, different areas which shouldn't be looked at in the same way. So I think we have a duty to uh, help procurement understand the value of what we do. So I think that's on us. Um, obviously, however, what is disappointing in some ways is when procurement doesn't help a company invest in brands. Because one thing we know, that investment in brands grows value for companies. Right. And when they take away that investment in brands, it actually affects their shares and affects the value that the company in the end offers. Right. Staying with that, uh, we've got Brexit, we've got yes. Donald Trump, and we've got demonetization in India, and uh, there are undercurrents saying cut back investments in advertising and marketing. So, Tamara, what would you say to all the people who want to cut back right now? There is so much evidence that shows cutting back on investment in brands takes share prices down. Right. And there's been a, a, a big study that WPP has done through our Brand Z. Um, which looks at brand value showing that if you invested in brands you would have been the top achievers in the S&P uh, or even in the world index so my advice is if you want your shares to grow and you want to create value absolutely invest in your brand. Right. Tarun, uh, yeah. India and demonetization what kind of conversations are you having? And All of them, that's, the raging, that's the raging debate so, about uh, so uh, short term. So, and so what's going to happen because uh, she's going to call you next week and ask you for your Q4, <laughs> Q4 uh, numbers uh, or your projections when this year, next year, and then you had it. So well, uh, unfortunately, the projections were, were done just before demonetization right. happened. So, <laughs> so we'll review it. So you, uh, you'll have uh, a rollback. Yeah. 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 Well, uh, again, as you know, the jury is out. Mm. Uh, but it's clearly from whatever uh, interactions we have had with uh, some CEOs and uh, marketers here, uh, clearly there's going to be a, a short term pain, maybe for uh, uh, a quarter or two. And after that, after that, there, there generally seems to be a consensus that uh, along with GST, uh, there is going to be a whenever that comes benefit whenever that comes. Uh, so now, depending on when that comes in, uh, maybe uh, two bad quarters and uh, two very good quarters can see us through next year. Fantastic! Thank you, Tamara. Thank you, Tarun. Thanks, Thank you. Thank you. There is only one brand message indeed to be delivered to a consumer and in between there are many ways to reach a consumer with that single brand message says Tarun Rai very well indeed. On that note it is time for us to take a short break when we return we speak to Nick Emery, Global CEO Mindshare.